What is going on, everyone? My name's Boyd, and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action spawning in the right side of the map in the blue color. Playing as Ra, his name is Shelty. His opponent today in the red color, playing as Loki, his name is Odin King. And now Odin King gets to spawn in with his tried and true Norse, though he has found himself in in a matchup that, uh, personally, I don't think it's that bad. It's definitely a raw favored matchup in a very slight way. I think that, it, but, but 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 what I mean by raw favored, and I want to clarify this, I don't mean that Ra is necessarily better than Loki. I mean it is easier to play the Ra side of this matchup if. You play the Loki side of the matchup at a high level, you can beat Ra. And that and that is if the Ra player is also playing at a high level. Does that make sense on what the system is that we've gone for here? We are watching the Divine Intervention Tournament. Um, this is, I believe, the I believe this is the Yes, this is the third game. So we've seen two games already. Uh, in the end, we it, the, the way in which we've kind of organized the God matchups uh, is there are... I've said this already once, but I'll try and explain it just in case people aren't quite aware. Um, I've gone through and I've graded every single one of the matchups based on what I perceive the, uh, the value of playing a certain God is in that matchup. And the grading is on a scale of 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, zero being even, three being really, really challenging. Uh, I've thrown away the second and third grades and said, we're not going to play those in this tournament. We're just going to be playing zero and one. So this matchup, I would be saying, is a one for Ra on the fact that Ra is significantly simpler to play here than Loki. Okay, that's all it is. Significantly simpler, not necessarily stronger, but simpler. Now you could argue that potentially Ra is more than this, but I did show this um, off to some uh, some top players, and nobody really complained about this specific matchup. So it's in the pool, and that's basically how it goes. Anyways, we'll see how things are going to go. Odin King here playing Loki, uh, and he is a Norse player, so he's going to be happy about this one. There's several approaches you can go for here, and we are seeing a forward house coming down, so this might be a little bit of a giveaway here that Odin King is going for a more aggressive approach. Uh, so there's there's kind of three approaches you can go for. Approach number one, which I don't think is very good, is your stock standard Hursa, Spamage, Hall of Thanes, semi-fast heroic, fast heroic, uh, fast mythic kind of type strategy. I don't think that's very good. Other two options are a Heimdall, uh, Heimdall-centric game plan where you try and put pressure onto the second town center and and win the game from that perspective or uh using that from that heimdall perspective you could go for a kind of heroic age type attack or the third one is just play the economy game get yourself a decently fast second town center to compete with your opponent ensure you've got your two trolls to play around the rock that's going to be coming for you uh ensure you get yourself watchtowers you wall up the map and you just play a uh, a late game where you get control of the map and you win the game that way i think that's actually arguably the best way to play but uh definitely challenging definitely a high skill a high strategic understanding high uh def playing a defensive game is always going to be uh, a little bit more challenging than being on the offense when you're playing norse but it's definitely doable so and we have seen this done from time to time from the best players out there uh so we'll see how this game is going to go as shelty is already advanced to the second age it looks like he's gone for a 416 advanced time here I said already advanced. He's almost advanced in the second age, whereas Odin King a little bit slower. He's going through four city. Even with the forward temple up, we just see the pharaohs searching around for a little bit of harassment. I'm a bit surprised to see this, though. Uh, Shelty is getting incredibly lucky here with this pharaoh movement, as he will be spotting the villagers here. But the villagers, they can just run at this pharaoh. Just run at him. Yeah, shank him away. Just say, get out of here and send a herso down to deal with that, because one herso would beat this uh this pharaoh as the other thing here i think is that this villager trading for that pharaoh in empowerment time and damage this is actually i think value for odin king in some degree but he does need to pull away from this at some point here as he does indeed 
do so. That's a longhouse now coming up. Still no uh, Townsend. He's not going for a Townsend. A Shelty is taking the aggressive approach. And this is why I say it's a little bit safer or better to go for the defensive economic approach because these Ford buildings, they get absolutely run over by the aggressive Ra or or just Egyptian kind of classical fight as the uh, the Hursa here starting to get taken out. We do see some raiding cavalry getting produced here as well as more Hursa as the uh, as the raiding cavalry coming up here trying to get on top of that Pharaoh there. As this uh, longhouse not quite going to finish off. We need to see a little bit of a, a little bit of damage coming in onto this one. Great micro from Odin King thus far. He gets up his longhouses, but he is behind considerably here. 5 HP on the Pharaoh as well. The Priest is in here to empower, uh, to heal that one back up as well if he so chooses. But Odin King at this moment, he can just garrison into his buildings here. Retreat back. He's still on this hunt for a little bit and he might be able to get something happening here. We're still seeing Axemen being produced, but now some Slingers starting to come out. Wouldn't mind seeing some uh, Spearmen at this point as another Longhouse is coming through with the Villagers retreating away. They might have been spotted by that line of sight there as yes he has definitely been spotted now as Shelty is chasing up this position here ever so slightly moving around we do see a reigning cavalry trying to scout uh, a couple more units are out and I think that this army is going to be a little bit scared about where it's positioned here because Odin King can come back here and deal with this one uh, very, very simply is my, uh, you'd have to assume there, as the Pharaoh gets sniped, the Blanket of Empress Zoe does get dropped there as well, as some units going for a bit of a counter-attack onto this position. The Hursa, you've got to be really careful with that Hursa, because those Axemen do tons of damage, as he does pull that one back, the Throwing Axemen getting targeted down as well, as we do see a defensive Shifting Sands here. This is huge for Odin King. That Shifting Sands is such a broken god power in this matchup. It can take units away from you, you can do whatever it wants, and Shelty decides to utilize that one to bring his army back to uh, to safety to some degree as the villagers have found themselves a little bit of uh, zebra over here. There is also a ton of hippo on this side as well that he can eat uh, to boot there. As the, uh, as the house getting taken down, this Ford base will be going down. Odin King going to have to re-evaluate where to... And Odin King doesn't want to go back to his main base. He says, I'm going to sit on the front here. I am sitting on the front and showing you the business uh, as best as he possibly can. Uh, does decide to move those raiding cavalry out, though one is very low HP. could definitely utilize that healing spring as much as he possibly, uh, as much as he possibly can as the Hursa almost getting caught out. Funnily enough, I think just abandon the Hursa. He's not... Does he have Hall of Thanes? He's not got Hall of Thanes, so I don't understand why he's continuing to build the Hursa. With three military buildings out, um, you don't... You can just afford to just spam raiding cavalry, throw an Axeman here, and you can actually find yourself an advantage uh, in these fights as Odin King decides to move forward. Can he win this one, though, is the big question. Shelty is in front by 20 population here, so taking these sorts of fights is not going to be that useful as Odin King moves forward. He sees some berry bushes. Will he see the hippos? Answer is yes, he does, uh, and he's going to be able to eat those very, very shortly. He's not paying attention on it just yet as he's getting pushed back in this position. Great little choke point here for Shelty to fight to allow those slingers, that wadget, to get a lot of damage done on the back. His own king's trying to get the Hursa in to get some damage done. The village is sitting idle here. There is a hippopotamus there that he can eat at any point, but still idle, focusing on his army. Maybe a little bit too much here as the uh, the villagers now come over. I'm going to try and uh, shoot that hippopotamus from across the uh, the forest there, using that as a natural barrier. As the army coming back in onto this position, Odin Kling splitting up his army ever so slightly, trying to push in and take out these units here as the throw and axemen pull back. Nice spacing here from those throw and axemen, staying away from the slingers as best as they can, but you do need to continue to pull them back to drag those slingers in to allow those raiding cavalry to get onto them. But Odin King here takes a decent fight, gets some decent trades but Shelty has pushed further and further in front in terms of population and he's in front in terms of village account here as well as Shelty turns around uh, not Shelty, Odin King turns around, takes the fire underneath the healing spring, it doesn't help all too much for the uh, the fights ongoing as uh, Shelty going to pull back or have to pull back into his main base here and re uh, and rejig it he's only got 700 gold here as well so things are very very scary moving forward here for, uh, for Odin King, 
as he does pull into his main base and we'll see exactly what's going to happen here as random goats being found that's going to be a big big help he can also get himself watchtowers and and defend a little bit longer here but he does need to get up to full population here if he wants to fight against this shelty army the other thing that is possible to happen here for shelty as an armory is coming down is shelty can get himself shadoof he doesn't have it yet but he can get shadoof he can farm he can get that huge amount of economy coming through and in yet again odin king here decides to tap out super early in this game Bit of an unfortunate one. Odin King obviously expecting to see the Ra player going for that far second town center. He was planning for that uh, and he got kind of surprised with that advance time. I don't remember if he saw the long the barracks coming up with the spy on the villager or not, but I think getting that scouting information in and just like if you want to go for the early build up in the in the front, go for it. Uh, if you see the town center coming down. But if you see barracks coming up, just sack the temple and retreat back to your main base. Get yourself the uh, the second town center over here. Uh, wall this off. Get that second town center up. And just wall your base up. Defend yourself. Go into that ball. The Egyptian player who goes for a classical fight, it seems like it's ridiculously strong against Norse. But in actuality, it doesn't really do all that much. Yes, you can get hunt. You can get access to the hunt. You can... I'll push your opponent off hunt. You can cause problems there. But if you've got resources in your main base, say these these herdables, these herdables, these chicken, you can you can start farming. You can enjoy that. You can then get yourself full population. You can push out. You can grab hunt and, and enjoy that as well. There's lots of options here for, 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 for Loki, but you just got to be really on top of what your opponent's doing. Scouting that out and getting that information in is paramount in these matchups. But... Shelty takes the win. Wins in three. Solid gameplay here from Shelty. Excited to see how he's going to do in this tournament. This is something that he does excel in. He is a very, very talented random god player. Even though he mostly plays just the uh, the Norse gods, he does have a very well-rounded roster. There's not many, if any, civilization that he's going to jump into and not be able to play at a high level. So I'm excited to see how far he's going to go in this tournament. If you guys enjoyed this one, please consider to follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next game.